Frumgar, they say, was the name of the chieftain who led his people to Eothaid. Of his son Fram, they tell that he slew Skatha, the great dragon of Arid Mithrin, and the land had peace from the long worms afterwards. Thus Fram won great wealth, but was at feud with the dwarves who claimed the horde of Skatha. Fram would not yield them a penny. Hey everyone, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well wherever you are in Middle-earth. Today we are going to be taking a closer look at the short story of Fram and the dragon Skatha, which I mention a bit in my video on the dragons of Middle-earth. Related articles and videos will be in the description and cards. My friends, thank you all so much for joining me today. Let's begin our tale. Sometime near 2000 of the Third Age, in the northern lands of Rovanion, south of the Grey Mountains, east of the Misty Mountains, and northwest of the Greenwood Forest, the Eothae dwelt after they were established in the north by their chieftain, Frumgar. These men were formerly of the kingdom of Rovanion, but conflicts with the men of the east saw many men of Rovanion move northwest along the Anduin and settle just south of the Grey Mountains. The Eothae were a strong folk, and were horse lords as well, as they were in fact the ancestors of the Rohirrim. However, in an area like this, they would surely have conflicts, not only with orcs, but also with the drakes of the north in and beyond the Grey Mountains. One in particular, a longworm named Skatha, whose name means enemy or robber or one who injures in Old English, proved to be an evil to them. Now due to Skatha's name, and since the Eothade had recently come to this part of the north a few decades earlier, we can infer that the men came close enough to his lair for Skatha to be problematic for them, and that he must have done some evil or ills to them that earned this name. Like Glaurong, I assume Skatha did not have wings, in association with his breed of Longworm. Whether or not Skatha was a cold drake or had the ability of fire breathing, I'm not sure. Lord Frumgar's son Fram would go forth into the Grey Mountains and find Skatha's lair and horde. The latter, and quite possibly the former, were stolen from the dwarves, a few of whom settled in the Grey Mountains before the majority of them attempted to move into the Grey Mountains from Erebor a few centuries later. So Fram came into Skatha's lair, and he slew the dragon, being yet another man in the Legendarium to slay a dragon. Fram saved his people from him, and took many treasures from the Horde. However, the dwarves, who had originally owned the treasure, claimed the now liberated Horde for themselves. Yet Fram, who slew the dragon, denied this, and sent them only the teeth of Skatha with the message, Jewels such as these you will not match in your treasuries, for they are hard to come by. This would anger the dwarves, and this insulted them perhaps in multiple ways, claiming that something from a dragon was of greater worth than the works that they made and had had, and that a trophy of victory in combat was something beyond what the dwarves could attain, since they themselves had not slain the dragon nor won back their horde. The Eothade would retain much of this treasure for centuries to come, and they would name their only known established settlement Framsburg after their hero who had saved them from the evil dragon. As for Fram himself, if he was not already lord when he did this heroic deed, he would rule for some time as the next chieftain. However, he would die, and it is rumored that the dwarves whom he had insulted through his greed had actually slain him in retribution. But the Eothade and even their descendants, the Rohirrim, retained at least part of this treasure, as Eowyn and Eomer gave Mary Brandybuck a horn from this very horde, a horn that would be heard in the Shire as the hobbits fought back against the brigands and ruffians. And that is the tale of Fram and Skatha the Dragon, but let's do a bit of analysis on it. This story entails so many interesting and big ideas in Tolkien's works. The existence of another named Dragon, another man who slew it, a very unique feud between men and dwarves, an heirloom that passed into the story of the Lord of the Rings, all told within a few references and lines in the Legendarium at large. It feels somewhat strange to have so many incredible things going on in such a short story that isn't much explored. Since we know the Rohirrim, based on their culture and language, are heavily Old English and Anglo-Saxon, and even Germanic and Viking-inspired, this was certainly paying homage to the story of Beowulf that so heavily inspired Tolkien at large. The inclusion of this story does a few interesting things. Since it actually happened in Tolkien's world, and it is not just a story within a story, the Eothade, who were alike to the people in the real world who wrote the story of Beowulf, were actually affected as if they were the men of the kingdom in the story of Beowulf that Tolkien could continue to work with. Perhaps to more fully flesh out the Eothade and Rohirrim afterwards, Tolkien wanted them to have a historic backdrop that was similar to the men in the story of Beowulf, at least to some degree. Fram rid the north of a great longworm, and he saved his people. 
And though he was certainly flawed, and greed had some hold over him, he was yet a hero of his people. And so we come to the end of our tale on Fram and Skatha the dragon. From this tale we see that we should strive to have the courage that Fram had, yet the compassion that he did not. There needn't have been such a division between his people and the dwarves, and if his compassion was as strong as his sword arm, there would not have been. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you all enjoyed this video on the tale of Fram and Skatha. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. What are your thoughts on Fram and Skatha? I really like that Tolkien included this bit of lore for the lesser known Eothade. I like that it's both Tolkienian lore and it pays homage to Beowulf in his own world of Middle-earth. Just something small, but something that is definitely there. Thanks to our Valor Tier patrons, Cal Wetzel, Peter Shepard, Jonathan Putin, and Mark Kralik, Blair Scout, and Merton, John Hume, Sam McBee, Matt Sabach, Elizabeth Calvert, Maz Gibbs, Reese Jenkins, Adam Petrulik, Brandon Glidden, Molly Sullivan, Daniel Burns, Anthony Harmon, Dorwin Gray, Arthur Merlin, and DJ Vaught. Thank you so much, and thanks to all of our patrons and YouTube members. Please subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the Free Peoples today, and I'll see you all again next week with a video on if there could have been another Dark Lord in Middle-earth. You all are the best, my friends. Thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one.